Now listen, I've got a message from Officer Tenpenny. Don't try and leave town. That would be a big mistake. You hear me? We're watching you. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 greatest PlayStation 2 games of all time. Do you see Gods of Olympus? Do you need more proof than this? For this list, we're looking at the absolute best games that came out during the PlayStation 2's lifespan. Which PS2 game is your number one? Did it make the list? Let us know in the comments down below. Number 20, Parappa the Rapper 2. For some reason, all our burgers turned into noodles. It's really not that bad though, you should try it. That's not the point. The first Parappa will always hold a special place in our hearts for its surreal style and charming songs. Unfortunately, the accuracy of the beats and the game's short length have made this PS1 classic age poorly. Its sequel, on the other hand, Fix those shortcomings. Inputs are more in line with the rhythm of every song. The main campaign features more songs, and there is an equally amusing multiplayer offering for you and your friends. Parappa the Rapper 2 may not have been a must own for every PS2 player, but it was miles better than its predecessor. Yeah, I know. Number 19, War of the Monsters. Few games have managed to fulfill the epic fantasy we've had with our friends where each of us battles it out as our own kaiju. And alas, few games of that caliber felt satisfying to play in general. War of the Monsters helped wrangle in a focused and fun experience for PS2 players. From the modest roster of monsters to the destructible environments, this was a heck of a party game for Sony's second console and offered up dozens of hours of playtime with its unique concept, wealth of modes, and arcadey nature. Why Sony hasn't brought back this game for a sequel is beyond us, but hopefully War of the Monsters will someday return instead of just being another PS2 game ported to PS5. Number 18, Grim Grimoire. Grim Grimoire was one of many PS2 gems that suffered an agonizing fate, becoming a commercial failure. It truly was an injustice considering how imaginative this title was. Summon familiars to help you fight hostile mobs, deshroud the fogs of war, and figure out where everyone in your school would disappear to. In addition to boasting a beautiful art style, Grim Grimoire managed to conjure a challenging adventure that any fan of strategy games would enjoy. So, if you haven't had the chance to check out the remaster Grim Grimoire once more, now is the time to do so. Number 17, Guitar Hero 2. Your highness, I'm left black. Before launching an expanded version on Xbox 360, Guitar Hero 2 was letting players jam out on PS2 one last time before taking the leap into the seventh generation of consoles. Whereas the first Guitar Hero managed to sell us on the idea of rocking out with a weighty piece of plastic around our neck, this sequel fine-tuned the controls and mechanics while also improving on the visuals overall. On top of that, the focus on more heavy metal was empowering to hear as we journeyed to become the virtual rock stars we were born to be. If only our skills were able to translate to a real guitar. Number 16, Silent Hill 2. <laughs> Silent Hill 2 is, simply put, one of the greatest horror games ever made, if not one of the best games ever made in general. The funny thing is, 
Our infatuation with it doesn't come from any particular mechanic, but rather its mystery. Oh yeah, three years ago. But I got a letter from her. She says she was waiting in our special place. There are so many layers to James Sutherland's story in terms of what his version of Silent Hill is, how the monsters represent his fears and perceptions, and the thoughts he's been repressing since his wife's passing. Every time you play it, there's a new facet of horror to uncover. Plus, it's a fun game to try and speedrun. Number 15, Katamari Damacy. Rarely do we get a game that presents a unique concept and executes upon it exceptionally well. Katamari Damacy came with a simple premise, row objects up into a ball, and it was one of the most satisfying ideas we've come across. Across a multitude of levels, you'll roll up objects within a time limit before hurling them into space and turning your mass of materials into a star. That wacky concept coupled with a fantastic soundtrack are what made Katamari Damacy one of the best franchises to come out of Bandai Namco Entertainment. <laughs> Number 14, Dark Cloud 2 a.k.a. Dark Chronicle. Well, not yet. You see... Now, Mayor, are you really trying hard enough? Admittedly, the story of Dark Cloud 2 isn't as strong as its predecessor. We will never forget our time with Toan, but Dark Cloud 2 excels over the original game in other ways. First off, the voice acting is immensely better than what we had before. It gets a little rowdy around here, so this guy will come in handy. Wow, really? It's okay? Second, combat is much more fluid and the mechanics are more refined. And the best improvement of all? You don't have to deal with that damn thirst mechanic anymore. Bow, 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 bow. Sure, Dark Cloud 2 has its own shortcomings, but it still managed to flesh out and focus in on what was working for its predecessor. Number 13, Gran Turismo 4. Man, Gran Turismo has certainly seen better days. And when it comes to racing sims, few have reached the same level as Gran Turismo 4. Despite being a couple decades old, this game is still a marvel to behold in terms of visuals. From lighting and shadows to the models of the cars and detailed textures, this game truly showed the visual fidelity that the PlayStation 2 was capable of. On top of that, the addition of driving missions offered up more high-octane racing for us to speed along tracks for hours. Number 12, Kingdom Hearts 2. My name is of no importance. What about you? Do you remember your true name? Oh, Kingdom Hearts. Our first ride through Twilight Town and other Disney worlds will forever remind us of one of the best JRPGs we've ever played. However, Kingdom Hearts 2 ekes out the win by a very, very small margin. Not only did it boast higher quality visuals and animation, but it came with a vast array of improvements and new mechanics. Reaction commands proved to be an excellent addition to the combat, allowing for more room to dodge or pull off spectacular attacks. As for the gummy ship, these segments were significantly more fun than the basic version we had in the previous game. So, is it really a surprise why it's regarded as one of Square Enix's best games? Ugh. Number 11, Twisted Metal Black. We won't lie, 
Twisted Metal Black can get unreasonably difficult at times, even when playing on easy. However, it reinvented and reintroduced the IP's identity in ways the original games could not accomplish on PS1. <laughs> Highly detailed vehicles and environments, more hazards across each stage, brilliant writing and character development, and an intensely haunting soundtrack kept us coming back to blast more cars, trucks, and structures. Though, if you prefer a more arcade-like experience, we can understand why many consider the PS2 port of Head On to be the superior of the two. Number 10, Sly 2, Band of Thieves. This is Peking Duck. I hear you, Blizzard. No, Sly, I'm the wizard, and you're Sitting Duck. It isn't often we see a sequel reach for a level of ambition quite as high as Sucker Punch Productions aim when developing Sly 2. To see this franchise go from a simple 3D platformer into an early example of open world gameplay was a sight to behold. Adding to this drastic shift in level design were the inclusions of Murray and Bentley as playable characters, missions that exuded the feeling of pulling off a grand heist, and more noticeably, better performances from voice actors Kevin Miller, Matt Olsen, and Chris Murphy. Just sneaking around for an hour in Paris will show anyone why this is regarded as the best of the Sly Cooper games, and one of Sucker Punch's best games, period. In pieces, sure, but the threat is real. Does the Claw Gang even realize what they've stolen? Number 9, Champions of Norath, Realms of EverQuest. The fact that there is no way to play Champions of Norath on modern hardware is a crime. This legendary game was one of the most fun action RPGs we had ever played, thanks to its wonderfully crafted world, deep combat mechanics, and high replayability factor. On top of that, it was one of a handful of titles that helped rein in online gaming for consoles by allowing up to four players to play together. Again, how has this not been ported to modern hardware? And what do we need to do to make it happen? Number 8, Final Fantasy X. I thought Sin just took me to a faraway place that I could go back in a day or two. But a thousand years into the future? If there was any Square Enix title that perfectly cemented their place in the PlayStation ecosystem, it was Final Fantasy X. While it abandons a couple of systems that made previous titles work, it introduces new ones that work just as well. The new battle system helped newcomers enter the series without any pressure to make quick and possibly reckless decisions. The new sphere grid gave players more choice in how they wanted to tune characters and their stats. And that story. Yes, make all the jokes you want about the laughing scene, but this is a story worthy of a chef's kiss. Mwah. Whoa! Wah! Number 7, Ratchet and Clank. Up your arsenal. Officials believe that an evil robotic supervillain known as Dr. Nefarious is the mastermind behind the Tyranoid attack. As you can see, the Galactic Rangers are putting up a valiant fight, but they are no match for these tentacle-eyed terrors. To those of you who absolutely adore the Future Saga on PS3, the PS4 remake, or Rift Apart on PS5, everything you love about those titles leads back to up your arsenal. This was the game where Insomniac Games managed to perfect the ideas and formulas laid out by the first two games in the series, and created a third-person shooter that was fantastic from start to finish. Weapons could be expanded upon further than before. The weapon wheel was reworked into something more quick and responsive to complement weapon swapping and Dr. Nefarious quickly established himself as one of the best villains ever created. 
it's truly hard to find one thing to detest about up your arsenal. Number 6. Persona 4 You're starting school today, right? My school's on the way, so let's go together. We can understand and sympathize with hardcore Persona 3 fans, but we had to go with Persona 4 for this one. How many times have you heard JRPG fanatics gush over the visual style or the assortment of well-written characters wrapped up in an incredibly suspenseful murder mystery? This chair and rope? That kind of arrangement is never good. It's almost hard to gush about without giving away too much of the game. Look, if you haven't played Persona 4 yet, the expanded and enhanced Persona 4 Golden is available on modern hardware as of January 2023. Go buy it and play it. You have no excuses. Okay, now go, go, get out of here. I'm a busy bear. Number five, God of War 2. The Ghost of Sparta's first game was a stellar outing, even though it had a few blemishes. God of War 2, on the other hand, came out looking and playing more beautifully. Controls were more responsive, combat was just as fast and frenetic as before, and just like with Gran Turismo 4, the PS2's visual fidelity was on full display. Sure, there wasn't a remarkable difference in mechanics, but hey, at least there wasn't any nonsense like that damn Tower of Blades at the end of the first game. Number 4, Okami. Okami was one of many games that was unfortunately overshadowed by the imminent release of the PlayStation 3, causing the game to flounder in sales. What many missed out on was one of the most creative and gorgeous JRPGs we have ever played. From the cell-shaded art style to the imaginative uses of the celestial brush in puzzles and combat, Okami was a hell of a visual spectacle. And its story was truly captivating as you witnessed the tale of Amaterasu. We're just sad that the poor cells are what caused developer Clover Studio, who also brought us gems like Beautiful Joe and God Hand to close its doors. Thankfully, many of those staff members will go on to form Platinum Games, Ignition Games, and even Tango Gamework. Number 3. Shadow of the Colossus What is there to say about Shadow of the Colossus that hasn't already been said? We, along with several other outlets and content creators, have beaten the drum about how this game is a masterclass in level design, enemy design, and storytelling. Sure, the PS2 version isn't the best way to play it these days, but even back then, it was unlike any other game we had seen at that time. What Team Eco and Sony Japan Studio accomplished was absolutely remarkable, and it's a must play for anyone who calls themselves a fan of PlayStation. Number 2, Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater. If we don't get Sokolov back before that weapon is complete, we'll be facing a major crisis. Whether you're a fan of the Metal Gear franchise or stealth games in general, Snake Eater is the prime example of how to execute a stealth game. It wasn't just enough to hide around corners or inside boxes anymore. Snake Eater demanded players to be more crafty and tactile in their approach. There was more of a focus on utilizing your environment to sneak past guard and infiltrate areas. You must be Sokolov. <gasps> Rather than having a mini-map showing you where every enemy was, you had to gauge sonar and motion detectors and keep track of guards with your own eyes. On top of that, 
you had to keep track of how well your outfits helped you blend into the environment. There were so many layers to the gameplay that made Snake Eater the best game in the franchise and a treasure of the PS2 catalog. Drift away. My place is with them now. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas Welcome home, Carl. Glad to be back. Many will point to GTA 3 or Vice City as the starting point in GTA success. We would argue San Andreas was the one. As media pundits push for a narrative and claim video games cause violence, San Andreas was innovating the open world immersive sim genre we know today. I thought this was family start. Yeah, it's Temple Drive family. We don't roll with them no more. Top tier voice acting paired with stellar writing, an expansive world to complement the non-linear gameplay, improved controls in both movement and driving. San Andreas barged through our door and brought us a game that would influence the industry for years. So why shouldn't it be considered the best PS2 game of all time? In the mood for more awesome gaming content? Be sure to check out this video here on Mojo Plays. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.